How are you guys doing? It is Wednesday, September 16th, 2020. I hear in this quarantine, I'm James Sims. And for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to take you um, through what's going on in the 2020 NBA playoffs in the bubble so far. And I mean, we started off with 30 teams. It went down to 22 in the bubble. And right now, only four teams remain. And the wild thing is, as of right now, there's more three, there's more three seeds in the playoffs than there are one or two seeds. I mean, that's actually pretty crazy. This has been a really, really wild playoffs, and it's been a really impressive, it's been an impressive road for all four teams that have gotten here. And one of the series has already started, so of course, I'll start in the Eastern Conference. So of course, um, starting with the Boston Celtics, who were the three seed, they originally swept the Philadelphia 76ers, and this was after Ben Simmons was out, and Joel Embiid basically had to take him on by himself. I'm surprised they disposed of the Philadelphia 76ers really that quickly. Um, and of course, they were dominating along the way. Uh, of course, for the Celtics, you had Jason Tatum, Kemba Walker, and Jalen Brown, each averaging 20, or 20 points to get them here in the first place. Um, and in the second series, they were going to beat the defending champs, Toronto Raptors, in seven games um, in the Eastern Conference semis. Even though they were missing Kawhi Leonard, they were still an amazingly elite team that was really, really well coached. But at the end of the day, the Celtics were just too much for them in that series. I mean, just looking out as to how that series really kind of panned out. Um, great. It was a really it was a really back and forth series with the Celtics. They still had they still had five players averaging double digits. Daniel Tice, their center, averaged 10 points and eight rebounds in the series. Marcus Smart averaged 15 points and six rebounds and five assists. Kemba Walker averaged 17 points and six assists. Jalen Brown averaged 20 points, almost nine rebounds, and almost two steals a game. And Jason Tatum would average, or Jason Tatum, their elite four, would average 24 points, 10 rebounds, five assists, and a steal, as the Boston Celtics would. No, they, they'd overpower the Raptors. They'd prove to be too much. I think just the way their the way their spacing works, they use their youth to their advantage, and they're a really well-coached team, and they had a really impressive path to get here especially after sweeping the Sixers and round in the first round and making it through the defending champs I'd say they had the hardest second round of any team to get through here even the Nuggets because last time or actually the Nuggets probably had a harder road but the Boston Celtics had a really tough road to get all the way here and they're and right now as of right now they're losing one to nothing to the Heat but I'll get into the Heat in a second right so going to the Miami Heat, the Miami Heat were the fifth seed coming in. Uh, their main star Jimmy Butler. They have a bunch of young, uh, they have a, a bunch of young pieces around them. You have Tyler Hero. You also have the the veterans of um, Jay Crowder. You have Bam Adebayo. You have so many pieces that play there. No, they play the game really well. Even Duncan Robinson off the bench, or he even starts some games. He's really really good. So first, the Miami Heat would sweep the Indiana Pacers. Incredible series. Um, but, and of course, in this series, in the sweep, they'd have the UC G Goran Dragic drop 23 points. And I think Goran Dragic has been their mm, second best player. He and Jimmy, I think I've shared the load. But Jimmy averaged 19 in that series. Tyler Hero averaged 16 as a rookie, by the way. Bam aver averaged 15 points and 11 rebounds and five assists, by the way. And then Duncan Robinson would average 12 points. And Jay Crowder would average 9.8. So, I mean... They were really doing. They were doing a really good job of spreading the ball around evenly, and even looking into the last series, they took on the Bucks. Giannis Antetokounmpo got injured early, but it's like I don't even know if that really would have changed anything. Um, the Miami Heat were just playing better basketball, and it looks as though they're getting stronger and stronger with every series. Looking at how they fared in the last series, they had six players averaging over nine points at least. Duncan Robinson averaged nine. Um, Tyler Hero averaged 13 points and five rebounds in the, in, in, the, in the Milwaukee series. Jay Crowder averaged 15 points and six rebounds. Bam Adebayo averaged 17 points and 12 rebounds. Goran Dragic would average 19, four and four with a steal at least. And Jimmy Butler averaged 23 points, five rebounds, four assists, and almost two steals per game in those five games to get the Miami Heat to where they are now. And people are overlooking the fact that they beat the number... Not, they're not overlooking. Of course, people are going to remember it because they're not going to let Giannis hear the end of it. But the Miami Heat are a very well-coached basketball team. There's a team that's built not for the regular season, but is definitely built for the playoffs. I wouldn't be surprised if they won this series. But as of right now, they're holding the... Right, right now, after beating the Celtics in overtime, they now hold a one nothing series lead over them. 
Um, but right now, that's how everything's looking out in the East. I'm going to take you out West next. The Los Angeles Lakers are the first team to place themselves in the in the Western Conference Finals after beating the Houston Rockets 4-1 to in that series. But of course, before that, they were going to beat the Portland Trailblazers 4-1 to after the Trailblazers came off of their... Um, their play-in series game against the Phoenix Suns, not the Phoenix Suns, they played against the Memphis Grizzlies. I'm, I'm, I'm tripping. But, of course, f- coming off that momentum and Damian Lillard playing his behind off, the Blazers were able to beat the Lakers in game one, but, of course, they would turn around and destroy the series. For the Lakers, I mean, they had four double-digit scores. Kyle Kuzma averaged 10 points. Contavious Caldwell-Pope averaged 11. And then, of course, you had their elite duo where... Anthony Davis averaged 29 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, 1.4 steals, and 1.6 blocks. And then, of course, their GOAT level 35-year-old small forward LeBron James would average 27.4 points, 10.2 rebounds, and 10.2 assists while averaging over a steal a game in five games. He averaged a triple-double in a series against an actual NBA team. So, I mean, that's there is that. So, following that series, he will go on to take on the fourth seed Houston Rockets led by former MVP James Harden and in this series the Lakers would have I mean they'd have five nine point scores they'd have seven eight point scores but I mean just going out of the going off of the the players that have the average double digits who came up with the Clippers in this past series Rajon Rondo who won championships with the Boston who won a championship with the Boston Celtics he finished with 10 assists or average 10 assists over four and a half rebounds and seven assists. And he averaged two steals a game for the series. Kyle Kuzma would average 11 points and three rebounds um, on the series. Then, of course, it would go down to the duo. Anthony Davis would average 20, their elite power forward, but average 25 points, 12 rebounds, and four assists, and, and 1.4 blocks in a series where he was taller by every player by the on, on the Houston Rockets, probably almost by half of a foot. So there's that. And of course, the Lakers' goat level shooting their small. And of course, LeBron James would finish averaging twenty five point eight points, over ten rebounds, and he averaged almost seven and a half assists a game while averaging two steals and one point eight blocks per game. No, like on the series. But with that said, they would kind of coast through the Rockets, who are a very well coached team with Mike D'Antoni. They still had James Harden and Russell Westbrook, and I think Russell Westbrook is the best. Second best, second option in the NBA. If James Harden's number one, if Russell, I think he's better than every second best player on every team except for Anthony Davis. And I think I'm only taking Anthony Davis because of height and his defense. But still, um, but with that said, the Lakers would punch their ticket into the Western Conference Finals and they get a good amount of rest while doing so. Uh, the last game they played was on September 12th and I don't think they're going to play for a bit. So oh, they're, they're, they're not going to play today, but they're going to play tomorrow with that said no they're gonna play friday i'm sorry but jumping out to the other team that made it the uh, the denver nuggets had a pretty wild ride to get here as well in the first series they were originally down three to one to the utah jazz who were the um who were the six seed at the time but the nuggets eventually came back and won this series um just looking at how they did for the first for the first uh, series jeremy grant would average 11 points um, now he'd, he'd average 11, a point, 11 points and a block. Michael Porter would average 12 points after coming off the bench in four of the seven games. He averaged 12 points and seven rebounds, averaging 26 minutes. Nikola Jokic, the Denver Nuggets elite center, would average 26 points, eight rebounds, five assists. Um, and then, of course, their point guard, Jamal Murray, would average 31 points, five rebounds, and six assists for the series in, se- in all seven games. Um, to give the Nuggets the win over the Jazz, like I said, after being down, after being down three to one, they ended up beating them. They beat them in Game Five by ten, Game Six by twelve, and they beat them in Game Seven by a possession, uh, just like in this series. But I digress. Getting back into the series that literally finished last night, the they took on the second seed Los Angeles Clippers, and the Clippers, of course, would take. They take they took game they they take game one the Nuggets would take game two the Clippers would take game three and four to go up three to one, going into game five with a possible chance to close out the series and of course the Nuggets beat the Clippers six by six in game five they beat them by thirteen in game six and then they won by fifteen in game seven pretty handily and just looking at the Nuggets did 
Now, the Nuggets had seven players that averaged nine points in this series. Just talk, and as soon as Michael Porter Jr. made the comment about not sharing the ball enough after game four, Jeremy, Monte Morris would average nine points a game in the series. Jeremy Grant would average nine points and a, and, and a block. Paul Millsap would average 9.9 points and, 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 and five rebounds. Michael Porter would average 10 points and six rebounds. He's averaged double digits in every series he's played in, so, in his career so far. Gary Harris averaged 10 points a game for the series with two, st- well, no, with, with two steals almost a game. Jamal Murray would average 22 points, four rebounds, and six assists, along with over a, an and over a steal for the series. And Nikola Jokic, oh, this series would be Nikola Jokic's series, as he would average 24 points, 13 rebounds, and six assists with over a block in the series for all seven games. And after this roller coaster of a ride, they played 14 games. They're all, and right now, they're, they've, they've made it all the way to the Western Conference Finals against the team that's played 10 games. And, I mean, with that, with that said, just looking at how it pans out, just looking at how the schedule looks, works out, after Miami's, series versus, after Miami's win versus Boston last night, there's no basketball today, of course, to give the Clippers a day of rest. But the Miami-Boston the Miami series will pick up tomorrow um, at 7 o'clock on ESPN. And then game one of the Denver Nuggets and the Lakers are, is going to be on Friday. And, of course, they're going to alternate until those series are over. But, no, with that said, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm shocked that these are the four teams that are left, considering everyone thought that the, the Bucks would make it this far. The Raptors would probably make it this far. But I, I, think people would, I think people guessed the Celtics. No one would have guessed the Heat, but when you think about it, when the way their team is put together, I guess I should have seen it coming earlier. Uh, everyone expected the Lakers, but no one expected the Nuggets over the Clippers, considering a lot of people had the Clippers winning the finals in their brackets. So I don't know. It's just that just that, that just shows you, man. You can, I mean, you, you you can guess all you want, but at the end of the day, as soon as the clock is up, there will be a winner, and someone has to advance and someone has to win. This whole season, is, it, it's, it's been a long trip and it's gotten to the point where there's four teams left. And as of right now, all four of these teams have a shot of winning. And with the momentum that they're carrying, I don't think any, if, if, if any of them won the championship, it wouldn't be a fluke for any of these teams. The Miami Heat swept a team that was ranked higher than them and beat the number one seed in the East pretty handily, only losing one game in the game that the MVP didn't play. The reigning MVP didn't play in. The Boston Celtics beat the defending champs, and they're going on pretty strong. The Los Angeles Lakers have been carrying the momentum they had, especially after not making the playoffs last year. And the Denver Nuggets literally came back from down 3-1 in both series. So I'm enjoying these playoffs. Um, In terms of what I think is going to happen, because I have no idea. If I were to guess, I think that the Boston – I think the Boston Celtics – Depth might win out, but I think the Heat are coached better and they're older. So I think real eh, now that I think about it, I think the Heat are gonna advance, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if the Boston Celtics did as well. But I don't I don't think this series will be as long as people think. I think I'd be very I'd be surprised if it reached seven. And to be honest, I don't think it reaches six. And then looking at the Lakers Nuggets series, I'd say just the same thing. I'd be surprised if that series reached. I'd be surprised if the Lakers Nuggets series reached six games. Hopefully, once the Lakers go up three one, LeBron can actually shut it out. But with that said, I mean, I really appreciate you for listening to all thirteen, fourteen minutes of this piece. Um, I just love talking about the playoffs because it's just wild. You never know what can happen, and then I, you can have an amazing regular season and get knocked out of the playoffs at any time. Um, but yeah, with that said, it is Wednesday, September 16th, 2020 here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims, um, with the elite and thanks once again for listening. I hope all is well. Thanks for hearing my piece and peace out.